Today we'll be exploring my most commonly used yellows. What up friends, thank you for joining me in another video. So uh, as for your request, I decided to make uh, a video focusing on all of my yellows, just like we did with the uh, reds and the blues and the greens. It's about time to do the yellow ones and I was quite surprised uh, finding out that I am using quite a few yellow colors. Um, so basically the colors I'm going to show you and let me just uh, recap. I have this written down here. We're going to look at uh, some Schmincke, some Daniel Smiths and some Windsor Newton Cotman. Uh, so we've got the lemon yellow, chromium yellow hue, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, another lemon yellow, new Gambosian cadmium yellow hue. Uh, these are the ones I most commonly use. Uh, a quick note. For example, the last one, the cadmium yellow hue, uh, is a yellow I don't use this, that often these days, but I did use it extensively as a beginner and as I was starting out, so I did want to include it here. Uh, it's a Windsor uh, Newton Cotman one. Uh, but in any case, I really hope you will enjoy this. I decided to, um, to choose different objects to paint and um, it actually turned out to be quite an extensive process, so I really hope you enjoy this one. Let's get started. Okay, so as always, I'm starting out with the drawing. Um, this is the lemon. This is one of the ones I enjoyed drawing the most. Uh, it's just really fun to draw these organic, simple, rounded shapes. Uh, I keep stressing that I think it's one of the best ways to uh, really learn watercolor because the drawing is rather simple and you can focus on what, what matters. Also, the light and shadow um, distribution is, is a little more straightforward, I guess. Um, same goes for this uh, bell pepper. It's a bit more complex. There is There are the ridges and uh, kind of its, its shape is a little different. It's not uh, symmetrical from all sides, but it is uh, still an object that is quite uh, accessible to sketch and to uh, paint very easily. Then you have the added bonus of the stem that allows you to uh, work uh, on some other skills and use maybe uh, different values as well. Uh, next up we have uh, the, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a while since I did this one, now I'm narrating it about two weeks afterwards, so it takes me some time. So this is the pumpkin. Uh, it takes me a moment to remember what I was sketching out. But yeah, uh, this is actually one of my favorites here. Uh, I like that the stem is much darker than the pumpkin itself. And you'll soon see uh, what this looks like with uh, added color uh, in there. Uh, the sizes were a bit challenging because the relative sizes are definitely not not accurate. You know, the, this pumpkin is the size of a lemon and a, a bell pepper, but that's fine uh, because I had some limited space. I also didn't really plan out my space properly. <coughs> Sorry about that. So um, could have been a little better. But in any case, now we're working on the corn. Um, I actually posted the final... Uh, result of these uh, on Instagram and a lot of people liked the corn which really surprised me. It was my least favorite uh, originally but then um, after after hearing from others that they liked it and it was one of their favorites out of these uh, seven or so uh, little sketches then I thought to myself hmm, that's interesting. Uh, so anyway now we have the sunflower. The sunflower is probably also was at least my least favorite. Uh, I think because of the color I used for it, the lemon yellow um, or it wasn't exactly lemon yellow, but but uh, I believe it was a Windsor Newton. I'll soon add labels so you will see exactly what each one is. Um, and my idea was to just choose a few random yellow uh, things, and then uh, choose the among the pool of colors that I most often used to choose the ones that, that will suit them the most, okay? So uh, for the sunflower and the lemon, I really wanted to use the more lemony, cool uh, yellows, and then uh, the rest were left for uh, the other objects. The banana, I really like the way the drawing, or the sketch rather, turned out. Uh, same goes for the pencil, I think you'll see when, when I get to the final result. I really like these two, they're small, but uh, I think they turned out really, really well. Um, so basically, I'm just indicating where the shadows are going to be. I'm, I'm adding this line here, showing where the transition from light to dark will be. And then uh, I'm going to sketch in the, the cast shadow uh, as well to the right uh, of the pencil. And once we're done with that, uh, we're ready to get to painting, to the painting stage. Um, so here are, I'm just adding some of the labels. So this one, I'll be using the lemon yellow uh, by Daniel Smith, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, this one is by Schmincke. Uh, this one... Um, the chromium yellow hue by Schmincke as well. 
Um, and I just really thought about it for a few moments and then um, assigned each of these a color. Uh, this one will be the uh, Indian yellow, uh, also by Schmincke. Um, for the corn, I believe, um, what was, oh yeah, yellow ochre, also by uh, Schmincke. And then I'm moving on to some other uh, brands. So this will be the uh, lemon yellow. I think this was the Windsor Newton one, Cotman. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, this one was Daniel Smith too. Okay, I really have to work, work on my memory. Um, I do remember I used one by Cotman. So probably the pencil, yeah. So this is the new Gamboge by Daniel Smith. Uh, and the last one will be some kind of yellow. I don't remember exactly which one by uh, Windsor Newton Cotman. Um, and it's very interesting because, yeah, it was cadmium. The reason I decided to use it, um, I'll talk about it a little later on, but I'm not using it often these days, but I did use it extensively when I just got into watercolor. So it was important for me uh, to cover that yellow as well. Uh, so there's a lot of things that, a lot of thought that went to the specific yellows I chose. Uh, so we start with the ye lemon yellow by Schmincke. I also have the lemon yellow by Daniel Smith. Um, not a big fan of lemon yellow. Um, I really tend to like, you know, I talk a lot about warm colors and how I like them, but uh, I also like a lot uh, the paints that have a large range of values. I don't know why, I just love to have the ability to go really dark with one color monochromatically. Um, and so when you look at this one, the chromium yellow hue, it's a little warmer, it's a little closer to the orange. It's also a bit contaminated, so it takes me some time to dig into it uh, and get to the cleaner version of it. So apologies about that. Um, this is something I will think about the next time. Uh, but there you can see the more pure uh, form of it. So in any case, this one has a better range of values. It can get uh, a lot darker and I really find that it's important for me for some odd reason. I really like that I can achieve that uh, darker value. <coughs> I don't like to to have to use another color. Like with the lemon yellows, you kind of find that you have to. Uh, with this one, the shadows were a bit more complex than I expected. Um, so so it took some some work and I tried using the purest and also of course this one has a limited range of values as well. Uh, most yellows can't get too dark. Uh, I believe the Indian yellow by uh, Schmincke has quite a nice range if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is why I loved using it as a, as a part of a primary kind of a trio. Uh, and this is why I dislike the lemon yellow as well. Uh, so here we have the Indian yellow I just talked about. Uh, this one can get a little darker, as you can see. Uh, it's it's uh, subtle. It's not much darker than the previous one, but it can get quite dark. Uh, and this one is really close to orange. Um, I think it's one of my favorite yellows at the moment. Uh, I love all the Indian colors, funny enough. The Indian uh, reds and, and even oranges, I believe. Um, I really love them. And you can see here how uh, when I'm using it a little pure, I can really get the, the, the values, uh, push them uh, to become much darker. Um, now, I didn't expect to have to use another color in this demo, but you'll soon see I'll, I'll later on use uh, blue as well. Uh, my original intention was to just use yellows, but then again, the yellows uh, tend to be so light uh, that it was just a must. Uh, in any case, now I'm working on the corn with the yellow ochre. Uh, this is a unique one. It's kind of a bit different from the rest of the of the colors I'm using here. Yellow ochre always kind of stands in its own category, uh, but I really enjoy using this particular one for landscapes and like the Velasquez palette. I really love this one. Uh, together with French Ultramarine, I think it's one of my um, favorite combinations. And funny enough, when I look back, I had a few art books uh, as a kid. Uh, I had uh, like um, picture books uh, with paintings by Van Gogh and and uh, Picasso and all, all sorts of artists and uh, Van Gogh specifically I remember used a lot of these um, if I remember at least correctly it could have been one of the other ones but I think this color really stuck in my mind ever since I was really young I think I was maybe 10 when I had these books or maybe 8 when I read them for, for the first time and I think it did just get stuck in there and so this is why I love yellow ochre and and the combination with the ultramarine or French ultramarine um, so so it's really interesting I don't know where the this is an interesting topic actually like where does taste in colors come from what makes you uh, like one color over another? It's really interesting. Uh, so now we have the Daniel Smith Lemon Yellow, probably one of my least favorite ones in this entire thing. 
uh, together with the Schmincke Lemon Yellow. Uh, next up, the New Gamboge, one of my favorites as well, together with the uh, Indian Yellow. Uh, this one I used so much in the past. When when I used to use Daniel Smith as my dominant palette, uh, I used this one a lot. And funny enough, it kind of goes back to being my dominant palette for portraits, Daniel Smith. Um, just because I have the setup, the setup is nicer, I think, for, for working inside. Uh, but my field palette, if you will, is definitely a Schmincke oriented. Uh, so it's just funny how that goes. I actually really want to set up a, a palette that's much simpler, maybe with five colors only and using full pans. So I'll need to think about that. And now I'm using the Cadmium Yellow Hue by Windsor Newton Cotman. Again, I included this one because I used it so much in the past. I'm not using it at all these days. Well, I probably will use it if I run out of color or if I want to you know, just practice, but um, yeah, I used to use it a lot in the past. So this is it, and uh, now I'm gonna talk a bit and we'll continue. Okay, so I just wanna give you a better view of everything together because what I'm gonna do now, I decided that uh, these being yellow colors uh, does not allow for enough contrast in many cases. So I'm gonna go back over them, uh, probably with something like uh, Thalo Blue or uh, French Ultramarine and just add some more highlights, but um, some more shadows. But before that, I just want you to get a good view of these. So we have here basically the lemon yellows uh, of uh, Schmincke and Daniel Smith, and they're quite similar. Um, then we have uh, this kind of secondary group of the Chromium Yellow Hue, Indian Yellow, New Gamboge and Cadmium Yellow Hue. Uh, these are all kind of similar, I would say. There isn't an awful lot of difference between those. Um, and then we have the Yellow Ochre that kind of stands in its own category, I think, uh, because it's it, just more towards the brown, I guess, and, and Ochre is a special, um, it's just a more special color, I believe. And also, um, uh, maybe Raw Ochre would look a little more yellowish, okay? So that's important to remember as well. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this so far. What I'm gonna do now is go at them one by one and just add the darker darks to create some kind of contrast because it's super challenging. Here I wasn't able to do that at all. Um, okay, so let's get going. Okay, so continuing on, and as I mentioned, I choose the French Ultramarine, um, and I really like this color. Uh, there was a time where I kind of took a break from it and worked more with the Thalo Blues and um, even Turquoise and, and uh, Azure and all sorts of other colors and even a cerulean and I think what I want to try next is really Prussian blue uh, because I really liked that one in the past when I used my first set of Van Gogh uh, which got me initiated basically into watercolor uh, but any, in any case this one kind of works with all of the yellows here in a nice way I think um, the, the only disadvantage of French ultramarine I find well, it really depends on what you use it with, but it's granulating and all of that sometimes, depending on the brand. So Schmincke, I have two by Schmincke, actually. One that granulates, I think, um, Ultramarine Finest. I, I don't remember the exact names, but one of them granulates and the other doesn't. Uh, so that's a thing to take into consideration. I like some granulation. I have no problem with it. Um, in my portraits, I prefer non-granulating colors, but basically, uh, yeah. So now you can see just by adding that, how much darker you can push the values um, compared to the yellows. Even this yellow, the chromium yellow hue, which can produce quite dark uh, values, you can't even compare. And we also need to take into consideration that this is the second glaze, so things naturally get darker uh, much more easily much easily, easier, yeah, whatever, <laughs> much more easily, um, more easily, I think, yeah, that's the right way. So, uh, look at the stamp, how dark it is, I really like this kind of effect, um, and this really gives it shape, you know, the, the, the contrast, I actually have a video planned out uh, that will talk about how to paint people realistically in watercolor, and I think it's going to be one, by the way, I didn't record for a few moments, so sorry about that, I think it's going to be one that you really love, um, I'm going to use uh, a recent painting I did, uh, actually a commission work, um, to demonstrate how um, how the thought process for me at least, or the work process when painting people realistically, how that works for me, okay? So how I tend to do it. Um, and this is something that I think is really gonna be helpful for, for you and many others, um, because I really will talk about the rationale of how I start and how I mix and what kind of, how much I push the values and and how I preserve the sense of light and shadow. And I will use it using using a very long painting process um, 
and running it in time lapse and talking about the the high level kind of thought process and then I'll probably have a video of the more detailed painting process as well um, so I'll need to think about these ideas and how I want to merge them so anyway notice how easy it is to now uh, again push the values of the lemon yellow uh, it was really hard um, in the beginning now a combination I used to really love is the new gamboge and uh, French ultramarine, sorry I just yawned, I'm a bit tired today. Uh, so this is a combination I originally really liked and recently less so. I don't know why, it looks a bit brown to me. I don't know if it's the, the new gamboge being contaminated, I don't think it is. Um, but I don't know, I'm really not sure. It's still the yellow ochre and French ultramarine is my favorite, so... Yeah, <laughs> but I do like the way this turned out. Notice how the, the top part of the banana is really uh, light and it really creates an interesting effect. Uh, another one I really think I nailed with this one is the pencil itself. It turned out, I think, really well um, and really easy to read as an object, I think. Uh, I just think I did a really good job with that. Um, sometimes you have to really push the contrast to get a realistic feeling. Um, you wouldn't expect it, but you really need to push it. And this is done. I will now give you a look of the final result and we can conclude and wrap up. Okay, so we are done here and I believe uh, adding the ultramarine blue really gave this uh, some, well, extensive, uh, or not ex like significantly more interest. And so, um, notice how it also reacts differently to the different uh, types of yellow. So with these ones, it kind of feels like uh, it even turned these into gray kind of uh, paintings. Uh, this one is a very bright kind of greenish. Uh, so it's just very interesting and I'm very pleased with this. Uh, and I think it's a great way of showcasing uh, the different yellows, really gives you an idea. Uh, I am always biased towards the warm orange yellows. These are my favorites, especially the Indian yellow and the chromium or the uh, new gamboge, which here uh, didn't really, um, I think, uh, I wasn't really able to express its color very strongly because it's much more similar to the oranges. Um, but in any case, yeah, just a really good, uh, I think, review of all of my uh, yellows. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Let me change the angle and we can wrap up this video. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this vid. Here we go, one last final look at all of these. I'm really pleased with my decision to add uh, blue in the end and I think the French Ultramarine was a good choice uh, for that. I um, really had a lot of fun. Uh, I think these kinds of small uh, paintings are really a good way of um, just practicing, you know, recognizing uh, the values and, and different transitions and how dark and how light uh, everything is. It doesn't teach you a lot about composition necessarily, but it is a good way of working, just like any still life, uh, of working in a focused manner on the watercolor skills, eliminating all other problems of how I build a scene or how I... Uh, do large washes, things like this, working small, choosing a single object and focusing on that. And I think this is a really good way uh, of doing this. And in any case, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. I'm gonna uh, increase the frequency hopefully uh, in a few months and I'm gonna do like tons of stuff. Uh, so I want you to uh, be up to date and a lot of this is gonna be more updates on my work and what I do. And so it is, I think, more important to consume it uh, in a way that, that is chronologically accurate, okay? So just as you get a lot of updates on what I've been up to while of course doing tons of this how-tos and things of that nature, okay? And different demos, uh, things like this. I recorded over the weekend a really, really good video of me painting outside. A friend helped me and I think you're gonna really like it. And I think also it shows a side of me that you don't generally see because there's a bit more um, communication and maybe inter interaction of me and my body and, and it's just, um, gives you a, a different picture of, of how I create in a more easy and uh, easygoing manner, let's say. Okay, so I think you're gonna really enjoy this one, so make sure you stay tuned. Also follow me on Instagram and Snapchat for more works in progress, uh, daily updates, stories, things like this, really fun. I will put a link to my podcast as well at the bottom that you should definitely check out, and I will see you again in another cool, fun video really soon. Thank you.